Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a well-rehearsed professional show. <laughs> you know, I was just saying before we started, I was saying to Michael who sits over there with a little headset on, I think he works for some kind of mail order thing. He, uh, he said, what are you going to talk about? I'm like, I don't know, Michael. He said, well, do you know it's the 60th anniversary of the CBS Eye? And I'm like... Well, there's a, there's a gold mine of comedy right there! Right, Jeff? Oh, that's classy. Yeah! I mean, it's like, you know, it writes itself! It's like one giant eye in the middle of the TV? Well, it, it just, it says penis joke, doesn't it, Jeff? Oh, it does. Yeah? So we, I mean, but the CBS eye is a revered symbol of corporate quality. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's an awesome symbol of uh, continuity through the years, uh, CBS, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I didn't know it was an eye for a long time. I thought it was just a giant... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice timing there, Betty White. What the hell? The hell? Well, I thought you were meant to be a professional sidekick. Look at you, like, I, I, I thought it was a giant. Wait a little minute, people come and go, someone has lunch. Ball. Look, I'm trying to run a clean show here, all right? <laughs> Let me uh, advise you of one thing, appliance man. You're not running any -la -la. show here. <laughs> <laughs> you are of equipment, just like me, just like Michael. We are all part of the CBSI. <laughs> dun, dun. Oh, do you have that thing? Oh, let's do it. We're all part of the CBSI. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, well, apparently Betty White is in the control room. That's what it is. That's where the comedy timing is tonight. We're all part of the CBSI. It's gonna be a long one. I'd take the, uh... I'd probably take the pill now. Bulls. We'll be right back, everybody. Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Kia Motors and the new 2012 Kia Optima. It's not your average mid size sedan. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Right, that's quite loud. That's that's enough. Just calm down. <laughs> Why do we go through the charade every night? You know, I, I was I was waiting out there. You know, it's not like I arrived by jet helicopter just in time. Like, oh, thank goodness, I got here just in time again. I'm waiting right there, and I can hear the warm-up guy going, "Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready?" And they'd be like, "What? What? What?" And I'm like, "Ooh." I'm like, oh, maybe this is going to be the one that's good. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but it is a great day for America, everybody. Isn't it? A great day. 
A great day if you love the, the, uh, the uh, you know, the baseball. Uh, tonight was uh, game one of the World Series. Uh, the Cardinals in St. Louis against the Texas Rangers. I, now, I know who won, of course, because we are live. So, congratulations, team you support. <laughs> or, or, oh, man, endless rain delay. <laughs> All right, I admit I don't know much about baseball. For example, why do baseball managers wear uniforms? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen in any other sport. Do the managers think they're going to get called into the game? <laughs> oh, it looks like Albert Pujols is hard and he's being replaced by a 60-year-old guy with gout. <laughs> Did I say his name right? Pujols? <laughs> In honour of the World Series, anyway, I'm going to spend uh, tonight's show randomly adjusting my cup. <laughs> that felt awesome! <laughs> I can see why you'd want to play this game. Whenever I see, whenever I see professional baseball players in action, I'm very impressed. Unfortunately, though, I live in Los Angeles and we don't have a major league team, just the Dodgers. <laughs> am I right, sports fans? I mean, seriously, am I right? I don't know. I... I do like base baseball, though. There's something incredibly uplifting about baseball, and I'm not just talking about the tight pants. I mean, there's a. <laughs> There's an inherent optimism in baseball. It makes it a game that could only have come from America because even the best players don't get on base more than about three out of every ten times. And if you can... No, if you can hit 40% of the, t uh, the time in baseball, you're going to the Hall of Fame. And then later you get your head frozen and, and put in a box or something like that. But I don't know what the system is. What I'm saying is that when the batter strikes out, he goes, goes back to the dugout and he gets ready for the next time and the rest of the team are like, you get up there and get him next time. And, and that's an optimism that makes baseball American. You think a French guy would be like that? They'd be like, strike one! Oh, I surrender. <laughs> Americans are like, go again! Hit me again! <laughs> and what's that? I don't quite understand the ass out thing for that. Is that gonna, I'm gonna make the pitcher laugh? <laughs> Now, here's an example of uh, the optimism, right? The, the St. Louis Cardinals have won the World Series ten times. The Texas Rangers have never won it. Do you think the Rangers are sitting there thinking, we can't win because we never have? <laughs> They're Texans! <laughs> They're thinking, who named our team after the Chuck Norris TV show? <laughs> Look, I love Chuck Norris, but, you know, I think you've got to agree, he's gone a little infomercial. <laughs> Some people uh, say that baseball has become less American with the influx of uh, talented Latinos into the game. These people are called racists. I say... <laughs> See, though, that is exactly what makes baseball American. It's like apple pie with a little salsa verde on top. You know what I mean? It's like only in America. You know, once I was in New York City, it was one of the first times I was ever in America, and I walked by a store, right? It was a bagel store called Sean's Bagels. <laughs> you don't get Sean's Bagels anywhere else in the world, but America's like, oh, do you know what I should do? I should start one of them bagel shops. <laughs> People enjoy that. You know nothing about bagels. I can learn. <laughs> For example, where would you put the hole? In the middle, probably. <laughs> baseball I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, I, you know what I think in baseball, though? I think the uniforms should match the team names. I think that would help. Like, the Cardinals should get big feathery get-ups like Angry Birds. <laughs> They'd be like Angry Birds, and the Texas Rangers should look like Yosemite Sam. And... <laughs> And they should get to carry guns. <laughs> They're Texans! <laughs> Go ahead, pilgrim. <laughs> Try and steal third. Go on. <laughs> I like uh, that most ballparks don't have any artificial noise of makers either. You know, you hear the same things you would have heard a hundred years ago. It's drunk guys making a ruckus like, ah, ah, 
honk, they stomp, but they, they don't cheat by using air horns or bugles, like these things they were used in the World Cup, what are they called, the vuvuzivas, the, the, vuzibu, the vulvas, you know the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, you remember they were these big hooting vulvas, you know, they, uh, the <laughs> That's quite rare, actually, to hear a, a hooting vulva. <laughs> you, you hear a vulva hooting, you know it's going to be an awesome night. That's all that <laughs> but the last thing a baseball fan wants to hear is 25,000 hooting vulvas as he, tries to, as he tries to put a plump hot dog in his mouth. You don't want to hear that. Craig, what are you doing? Never you mind. <laughs> Look, whenever I go to a game, though, this is why I like the baseball, is because I enjoy the seventh inning stretch. Because you really, you need a stretch after sitting in your ass for seven and a half innings. <laughs> but that's when you get to sing that song, Take Me Out of the Ball Game, which is a great song. But, song, but it doesn't make any sense when you think about it, because you're already at the ball game. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. Are you asking to be taken to, out of this ball game to a different ball game? <laughs> And now you're demanding that I buy you a bunch of food, even although you never get back with me. <laughs> buy your own cracker jack, you. <laughs> Perhaps I've taken it too literally, really. <laughs> Do you enjoy the baseball, Jeff? Love the baseball. Do you really? Do you, yeah. any particular team you uh, follow? No, just love balls. <laughs> really, I thought there was a very specific team you were a part of. And it wasn't the hooting vulvas, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at four hooting vulvas right now. <laughs> I have no I'm terribly sorry. That... Can we say any of this? Is any of this going to be on TV? <laughs> well, when I say on TV, you know, CBS in the middle of the night, you know. Like... <sighs> oh, you know hey, uh, why don't you do some more of those bagel jokes? I love that bagel material. <laughs> The hell, man, you're not a sidekick, you're just a thin heckler. Oh, man, I'm big into the bagels. Yeah, no, you're not. You're just, you're, you're picking at me. You're no. not, you're not supportive. It's not like, oh, ho, oh, you're the man, Craig. You're just like, oh, why don't you do more of the bagel material? <laughs> well, to do that again, I like No! <laughs> I'm not your puppet. You're my puppet. I like material that has to do with doughy holes. <laughs> I see. Now, why don't you come over here and kiss me? I'll come over there, but I won't kiss you. All right. <laughs> I didn't know this camera moved. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. This is like having acrobats or something on the show, isn't it? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Come here often. <laughs> Every <laughs> night. How about you? <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the big show where nerves have got the better of all of us this evening. <laughs> See what I'm doing over here, Jeff? I'm playing a game of solitaire. That's what a guy does on his own uh, when he doesn't have a sidekick. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing pocket pool over here. <laughs> <laughs> Solitaire's the only game. <laughs> and every road it takes me <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <clears throat> what time is it, Jeffrey Pearson? Tonight's Tweet Mail is brought to you by the hit crime series GP and the Fergs. One's into dudes with Wilford Brimley mustaches, and the other is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Play the thing. Are you serious? 
these, Michael? What, 58 seconds to do all of them? Oh, crap. All right, Jeff, you ready? <laughs> all right, uh, this is from uh, Adam in Atlanta, Georgia. Ever been in Atlanta, Georgia? <laughs> Hi, Craig, is it acceptable to nap at work when you have a closed office and no one can see you? Yeah, yeah it's acceptable to nap at work if you have your own damn TV show. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, this is from Eric in Springfield, Ohio. Ever been to yeah, Springfield? Yeah, yeah. Uh, dear Craig and Jeff, should I tell my roommate he uses too much toilet paper or just leave it alone? <laughs> I'd leave it alone. Yeah. This is from Brian in Denver, Colorado. Dear Craig. No. Dear, dear, dear Craig, I just started at my new job, but I'm in way over my head. How can I fake it? Pretend to be Scottish. That's what I did. <laughs> This is from Matt in Lincoln, Rhode Island, says, Dear Craig and Jeff, I have seen many more skeletons on people's porch, porches this year for Halloween. Are any of those skeletons Jeff's relatives? You know what, this may surprise you, but we all have skeletons, you I can have that. <laughs> Craig, what about jellyfish? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> this is from Jen in Seattle, Washington. Dear Craig and Jeff, every time I see my sister, she criticizes my clothes and hair. No matter how much... This is from Philip in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, Craig and Jeff, my parents have begun following me on Twitter and now are worried about what I say. Any advice? Yeah, don't say anything you're worried about. <laughs> this is from Tim in Tempe, Arizona. And this is from Mitchell in Lakewood, Colorado. Hi, GP in the Fergs. Wow. I've given up smoking recently and I notice my mood swings are getting worse. Any suggestions to calm my nerves? I'd play a game of solitaire. <laughs> Me down. I think we, we got through them all there, Jeff. Well done. Or play pocket pool. <laughs> Does it count as pool if you only have one ball? <laughs> or is it solitary? <laughs> 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 we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. tonight is a very beautiful actress. She's in a new film called The Mighty Max, which is in theatres October the 21st. I've become very British. Have you noticed that? It's quite sexy. Thank you. I, I thought I was being rather clipped. <laughs> sort of. If I did some more blinky, it'd be quite Hugh Grant, wouldn't it? It's all... <laughs> She's a very, very beautiful actress. I, I don't know what I'm going to do when she comes out. I'm going to be so nervous. <laughs> Take a look at this. The hell? <laughs> I gotta see that movie. Carla Gugino, everybody. Carla Gugino. Carla. Okay. Wow. I, I... Look at you. You look absolutely spectacular. It's just wow. sensational. Thank You're all you glittery so and much. shiny. I could just polish you up. You, <laughs> you, we need to do some polishing. It's very messy around you. Oh, it's just kids having fun. We'll be fine. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's how I uh, tell the future. Yeah. I can can you tell my future, please? I can tell your future. Your movie about basketball playing uh -huh. nuns? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, yes, yes. It's, it's going to be a big hit. Thanks. There you go. There, I, that's I mean, good. I loved you before, but now it's, you know, once we get... That's all, all it takes? Can, it is. I'm easy. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's sensational news. Um, um, the, the, what's the movie's about basketball playing nuns? It, it, no, it, it is really... It's based on a true story, and it's a real woman uh, in the early 70s, Kathy Rush, who took a small Catholic girls college, Immaculata College. She went to like coach there, basically just to suppress their hormones was sort of the the theory. And she took them all the way to the nationals, changed the face of women's basketball, and it's kind of amazing. Let's go back to the hormone suppression. <laughs> <Surprising>. Yeah. <laughs> Gen so they're gonna try Generally, if you might be studying to be a nun, that might not be the way. Oh, you... they were studying to be nuns. Well, no, they weren't. They, they were in the presence of nuns. They were, um, some might have wanted to be nuns. Did you ever consider uh, taking the habit yourself? No. But I will say that in the movie, I did, um, the, but we, we actually shot at Immaculata College, and the nuns and everybody there are so amazing that you can kind of see how something magical could have come from that place. Like, it is really, really special. Do you know what? The first movie I ever saw had nuns, and it, it was uh, Sound of Music when yes. I was a kid, when I was three. Singing. Yeah, singing. No, I was terrified of them, though. Well, I thought they were killer. <laughs> I thought they were like giant killer penguins well, or something. <laughs> in a... This is the thing. Yeah. Is that, is
is that we, this was the whole thing with this team because I looked at all this archival footage and what's amazing is these nuns were in the stands cheering. I mean, they were going crazy and the other teams were like, there's no way we meet, beat these guys. I mean, they have God on their side. Right, yeah. Well, Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, well, it's a bigger debate, really. But, but it's I see where you're going. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. It's, a, it's a much larger Are you an extremely religious person yourself? I am not, I, actually, at all. I'm, I'm, I, would, I would say I'm a spiritual person, oh. but not a religious person, which was actually what was really amazing about playing this role is that I learned a lot more about sort of that whole world world and that religion than I had known about it. Have you ever been to Rome, the center of the Catholic yes. Church? I've, well, the Vatican, yes. I've been there. Yes. Did when you I, like it? I did like it. Did I you have pizza? Sort of, I had pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had pizza. You no, did but I remember pizza? looking at the Colosseum going, I'm such a tiny little speck of dust. Like I had one of those complete like realization moments no, no, of my as, place as in the world. No, no, as specks of dust go, you're doing fine. You're, uh, yeah, yeah. you're one of the more vavoom speck of dust. That, no, Thank I know you. what you mean though. I, I went to uh, Rome. You know, perspective. Yes, and, like, yeah. Well, I'm from a very old country. Also, you I'm are. getting quite old you myself. So. And, and, you do, and you do a very good British accent. Thank you very much indeed. Have you're... you ever been there? Sort of Britain, sort of like I have sort of, and then, and then somehow you always want to do this. You know? so, I don't know why. Like that. Like, None of my British friends do uh, that, but everybody does it. Well, yes. uh, well, it's like, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> exactly. Excuse don't me, I have to go and get my sausages. Oh, yeah. Just one moment, please. I'll just get over here. I've got to... And everything becomes like this. Well, I used to be terribly angry at British English people, really, to be honest, when I was when I was young. Superiority well, or? because I was Scotland, England. Right. It's kind of like yeah. you know, uh, you know them and us. And and then as I got older, I found them rather charming. And they're always doing mad things. Like I just have to go over here and get a hippopotamus I left later. <laughs> so we have to get it over here quickly, or it's going to dry out. But somehow, uh, because of their accent, you, they sound really smart saying yeah, that too. You're like, oh yes. Oh, you, you don't want your hippopotamus I mean, I mean, to dry you out quickly. Want get it, it over here. Yeah. Um, Let's moisturize yes. it. Yes. Yeah. No, but I did dress as a nun in the movie. Did you? And you, you, it's you, so hot. Those habits are boiling. You're telling me. I, I, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> did you have one of the big giant hats? <laughs> No, they are. I don't know how they are not sweating. Constantly. They might be. They, they, they might be. Yeah, they might know. be. Yeah. No. No. Um, yes. Uh, so after Rome, where did you go? I'm trying to get you off religion. I See know. I know, it? and I really appreciate so, that. Uh, so um, I am Italian, so I like. Really, I like with a name like Gugino? Who <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> but the other side is Irish, and you may not know that. I. Burgess. Think... What is the other? Burgess. Burgess. Yeah. Is that Irish? Yeah. Oh. English Irish. Oh. Um. <laughs> Conversation stopper. <laughs> I didn't um, know Burgess was Irish. I, um, I heard something about myself about Irish today, actually. Really? Yeah, I used to think that my mother's family were Scottish and my father's family were Irish. Right. But I heard from my Uncle James that I actually no, my mother's family also Irish. Really? I'm a complete fraud. Yeah. <laughs> All this time. Yeah, and completely... the only thing that's Scottish about me is my um, <laughs> enormous penis. Other than that. <laughs> going to be one thing that well, was Scottish. Well, if you're going to take I one mean, thing for being Scottish, that's, and I was yeah, born there and raised good. there, and you know. But. Yeah. Do you fancy a commercial break? Uh, terrible. <laughs> badly. <laughs> <laughs> Back everybody, I was uh, I was here the whole time you were watching commercials. <laughs> it was good commercial break. Though. I was just staring at you. The yeah, whole no, time you know, I, 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 I. <laughs> you must think men behave like idiots all the time, but it's only when you're there. <laughs> the rest of the time we're fine. Really? Yeah, we, we don't all bump into. That. I have to go get my hippopotamus. You know, it's, it's fine. I, I really do want to meet your hippopotamus someday. Is, is that? No, that wasn't. A, that wasn't a double entendre. That was because you did such a good impression of the Brit. Well, I... I yeah. And you made me well, believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's because I'm being, you know, kind of fussy. <laughs> yeah. So where are you going but next time? did you time? notice that we're matching? What, it's this? It's as if we should go to an event together. Well, we can go to an event together. Mm-hmm. And we'd look very what, what regal. What event do you and, want to go to? Um, I don't know. We could go to the Wax Museum. Sure. Something, you know, goes to... That's an some, event. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Man, you really are. He's like, let's go to the Wax Museum and see Brad we, Pitt. We could make... <laughs> Don't those things freak you out? I don't know, I find them highly entertaining. I, I love it when they get the photograph to you. It's Paris Hilton and her wax image. Which one is different? Like, it's like, it's clearly that stuff. I mean, I, you know, oh, I don't 
mean no disrespect if you're a wax artist, but they are rubbish. <laughs> it, it must be really hard, right? Oh, it must be terribly yeah. hard, especially when you get... It's we can't judge them. Someone super attractive as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Angelina Jolie and you get this kind of... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's know, go to the but, wax museum. But, but the more people get Botox and all that kind of stuff, it's just going to start true. looking more similar, yes, you know? that is true. So maybe that will help I'm going to get that done, though. Are you? Yeah. Where, where do you want to get it? Pretty much all of me. <laughs> uh, I'd like to... Yeah. I've noticed as I get older, my skin's getting a little loose. <laughs> so I'd like to kind of like... <laughs> just firm it up. Yeah, firm up everything. You just get like a, uh, some kind of faucet right? at the top <laughs> and just have it drip down my entire it's body. It's a monthly drip. Yeah. A month... Uh, oh, that's just no, so... No, that that's was a not, very no. bad one. No, yeah. not good. That sounds terrible. <laughs> so the wax museum then, that's a love. How I mean, often we could have an there? event there. I don't know. I'm sure they have events at the wax museum. Yeah, I never go. That's why I want to go. Well, that's true. Do you ever go to the Ripley's Believe It or Not up in Hollywood? I have never been there either. But, you know, no. I, I just never fantasize have about these places. I just don't go. But the Ripley's Believe It or Not, I think it's a very lazy title for a museum because they're like, believe it or don't or believe no, whatever. it. Or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, what about I'm, Ripley's We Don't Give It? Uh-oh. How about that? <laughs> never thought of that and it's true what yeah, is like believe it or don't believe it like you just give us the money sucker <laughs> Uh, are you fascinated by that or do you do you uh, you know look at uh, photographs of people with odd things I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Not generally. Oh, okay. Um, I no, stole but, my but, collection. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, now in magazines, every, nobody looks like they look, you know, so it's like... Do you know I, when I, that, we, that thing, when you look in the magazine, it says the stars, they're just like us. Right. They're not. No. <laughs> no. I mean, they might be like you, but they're not like me. It's like, the stars, they're just like us. They pack their groceries. And I'm like, this... But everyone does have superstitions. Everyone has those little things that make them the same, which is where they're going with that theory. They just well, don't ever pick the right ones. What little superstitions do you have then? Don't you have like? Sure, but I asked you. First. I don't know when you're going through a yellow light. Do you kiss the roof of your car? No, I will now. I mean, yeah. now you got to because but if you I don't, don't go it's through bad a yellow news. light because I obey the highway code. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I got to be I've a rebel. I've got another one. Uh, let's see. I have to wear a certain color of underpants when I do this show. Really? I used to have it. I only broke it yesterday. Wow. I would, I How would was never the show yesterday? It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I was wrong. Yeah, I, I had these rituals in theater, and one night I used to always put my script in one place, like when I'm doing a Broadway play, mm -hmm. and one night I forgot it, and I was truly terrified. And I had like one of the best shows I've ever had. Well, you know, that happened so, to me once I was getting on a plane, and I always had this weird thing that I should never drop a coat hanger before I get on a plane, because <laughs> then the plane will get into difficulty. Right. Yeah, I'm very crazy. Oh, person. I do this too, yeah. though. This is, we got to help. It's magical thinking. This is, yes. It's a symptom of, uh, it's being crazy, but they, uh, <laughs> but what you, I thought, I, and then I was getting on this plane once, and I was, uh, and I dropped, a, I don't even know why I was carrying a, a coat hanger, but I dropped the coat hanger, <laughs> and it landed, and it scuttled off down the tarmac, and I thought, I'm in big trouble, and then here it, I am. Yeah, yeah, you're here, and, and, and I don't know what happened to the coat hanger, <laughs> but that is magical, I think okay. it's, a, I think it's something to do with being a control freak. For sure, it's you a know? kid thing, and wanting control, and then you start, it used to always be for me a color of rubber band. Oh, really? Gotten over it. Gotten over it, but yeah. Do you always wore a color? Because now you look like you're wearing a lot of gold colored... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> These are my superstitions now. Yeah, yeah. Um... Mama needs some more superstitions! <laughs> 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 Honey, um... I'm feeling superstitions! <laughs> Jules, yeah, please. Yeah. I think they'll help. Tiffany superstitions. <laughs> yes, no, I've, I've become a little less superstitious, but you got to keep some. Like, to, you know, when I toast with anything, I have to look in someone's eyes. I don't like it when you don't make eye contact on Toast. Really? Yeah, it's not good. How often do you toast? Are you a big drinker? I'm not a big drinker. You can toast with tea or whatever too. I'm yeah, no, that's that's to unlucky. Alcoholic. No, no, no. It's unlucky to toast with tea. Oh no, really? I just made it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you can't tell me these things because I'll take it in. It'll well, you know, go I've inside. got my big one is shoes I, on the I, table. I trust you. You, you. you mustn't do that because <laughs> I would lie to you. <laughs> you must know this. I would to get what I want. <laughs> No, I, uh, no, I wouldn't. Of course I wouldn't. Thank you. <laughs> You're making me laugh so hard that at this point I'm actually crying, which is, I don't think that's a good that's, sign. That's good. That's like turn. It, it's like when you drink yourself sober. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's like you I just drank, come full circle? Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. I drank so much. Oh, I drank, which when people say I drank myself sober. But no, you didn't, you idiot. <laughs> You just, you just drank yourself into a completely different dimension. That's what you did. Yeah. You ever drink yourself sober? 
No, You're I never have. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Yeah, no, I'm not a big drinker. No, it's more. It's not my vice. Paul, Paul, your thing? No. <laughs> If you'd like to know, chocolate. Oh, boy. That's boring, but it's yeah. true. No, that's, I love a bit of chocolate. <laughs> hey. That's also, you know, it can send you in, in, into an altered state. Chocolate, good chocolate. Yeah, but I've never had so much chocolate. I woke up in a jail in Tijuana with a sore ass and a tattoo. <laughs> you know? there's, there's a difference. I mean, it's not like, oh, chocolate. Ah. <laughs> Sounds like it could have been a pretty unique experience. Maybe you didn't want to miss that one. Yeah, well, I would have missed it because I would have been drunk. <laughs> right. Now, look, we're out of time. Quickly, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, do we plug the movie? Yeah, it's, it's probably awesome, right? It's really, it is oh, really amazing uh, and super uh, inspiring. Awkward pause, mouth organ, big cash prize. Um, I will do awkward pause. Oh, awkward pause. Right, good. Because I did the mouth organ before, which is always fun, but we've done that. We've gone down that road. <laughs> Have you started the awkward pause right now? Is this you starting it? I can't ever pause in anything. No, oh, well, it's time to pause now. Take your time. Slow down. Let's add a subtext in here. One of us has passed gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add a sound effect later when you did that. <laughs> bit uh, ticked off that well I'll tell you I am a little bit ticked off because there was a guy in the second row right there he just been at his nose right there like looking right at me like like we were toasting Anyway, uh, uh, my next guest is an extremely funny comedian. He's performing this weekend at Stamford, Connecticut, Holland, Pennsylvania, and uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. Uh, he's got a podcast called... Wait a minute, that's the three gigs I'm doing this weekend. Oh, yes, he'll be with me. Uh, he's got a podcast uh, called Fixing Joe. It's available on uh, iTunes. Please welcome Joe Maddarese, everybody. Joe Maddarese. <laughs> folks. <laughs> uh, that is exciting. Uh, I don't know what, I don't want to bring you down, but basically the way I start is, uh, you should know this, I have, uh, I have a lot of problems. <laughs> uh, some of it is because my dad wasn't much of a mentor type, you know? You know what was my mentor? Because my dad just was absent. Uh, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky was my mentor, and he had some, he had some good advice, you know? Like, uh, Rocky won, he had the, you know, I don't, I don't really think I can win, you know? But all I really want to do is go to distance, you know I mean? That bell rings, I'm still standing, I'm gonna know I'm not just another bum from the neighborhood, you know? It's a good message, right? Rocky IV, he had the, you know, if I can change, and you can change, then everybody can change! That one spoke to me, man. Then he hit Rocky Six. He's like, you know what, son? Life ain't all sunshines and rainbows. Life is hard. Nothing will beat you harder than life. But it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. And keep moving forward. <laughs> That's how winning is done. <laughs> but one thing you never learned in a Rocky movie was how to box. <laughs> Yeah. That guy didn't block a punch for six movies. He's like... <laughs> he had the fighting technique of Glass Joe from Punch-Out. Like... <laughs> One of my other problems is, is uh, I, I got anger issues, too. And I get angry at things that shouldn't make you angry, like recycling. <laughs> That's, a, that's an issue of mine, right? I don't know if it's because I'm old, I grew up in the 80s. But I seriously, I mean this, and I mean it from the heart. I miss littering. <laughs> I do. I grew up in a time where you could take a whole bag of McDonald's drive-through trash, Jersey Turnpike, okay? 
And there was no conversation. There was no, should I throw this? Out? No, it was just, you grab the, woo! <laughs> Someone might have honked at you, but it was just to let you know, hey, great throw, buddy. Another one that gets me angry are these towns that have uh, themed sports bars for the other team. You ever been to one of these cities? I was, I was just in San Diego. They had Oakland Raiders bars there, okay? Yeah. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. I dare you to try to open a Dallas Cowboys bar <laughs> in Philadelphia, okay? For, first day it's open, burnt to the ground. There's two guys outside going, dude, what happened? He's like, I don't know, man. The owner yelled, how about those? And then they lit him on fire. Now, the other thing is I have anxiety issues, okay? I don't like to fly. All it takes to scare me on an airplane is to hear this, this is the captain. <laughs> I hate that guy. Does he need to say who he is? We know. Who else would it be? You're never gonna hear, uh, hey, uh, this is Steve. I'm in seat 18C, and uh, just thought I'd check in on everybody. This movie sucks, right? And I never get that smooth flight. I always get this flight. It's the worst when it's a short flight. Like, you gotta be kidding me, right? I'm gonna die on my way from Cincinnati to Columbus? I could have jogged it. And who's always sitting next to me on that flight? Johnny Relaxed, right here, right? The guy I wish I could be. I look over, he's like reading the sports page through a hailstorm. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how are you reading? I'm looking out the window, trying to steer us with my mind. <laughs> I'm Joe Mattery. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? <laughs> I'm worried about that cat, you know. He's sounding a bit more like a horse every day. Do you know what we haven't done in ages? With slow, when the slow secretariat. Oh. You know when we do the mouth organs and secretariat comes out slowly? I love that. Yeah, all right, let's do it now then. All right. Who's that at the door? Wait, 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 wait. What the hell are you doing? The audience is all standing up doing that slowly. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, we better just do a regular secretariat. Who's that at the door? All right, that's enough. Now listen, wait, don't, don't you, there's no need to give yourselves a round of applause. I know what you're thinking, Jeff, you're thinking, Craig, why did you bring Secretariat out there? There was absolutely no need, and I would say au contraire, Jeff, which is French for Rocky Dingo, because... <laughs> what the hell, man? Well, I'm just saying, if I don't, you know, if Secretariat, there's a, a two friends of Secretariat who don't get paid if, unless Secretariat comes out. Oh, and they get mighty worked up. Well, it's hard walking by them at the end of the night and they're standing there half hoarse and pissed off. 